So we'll start with w as x plus 2y plus z squared. And we're going to start with 3. So there's going to be a path. The x-coordinate will be r over s. The y-coordinate will be r squared plus ln of s. Make sure your s's don't look like 5's. I put no 5's in this problem on purpose. And z will be 2r. So we actually have a path now of two variables, alpha of r comma s. We have r over s is the x output, r squared plus ln s is the y output, and 2r is the z output. <clears throat> So there are five derivatives that make sense to take of w. Three of them are pretty clear from the gradient. I can do a wx, wy, wz. So these are the easy derivatives to compute. What is the x derivative of w? One. One. What's the y derivative? Two. Two. And z derivative? 2z. So that's gradient of w right there. What derivatives does it make sense to take of alpha? Can't say t derivative because there's no t variable, so that doesn't make any sense. So there's an r derivative and an s derivative I could take. Let's just do, which one looks easier? Probably s, because r appears three times. So No, that'll be too trivial. Yeah, let's go with the r derivative. So it makes sense to have two different derivatives of alpha. I'm going to just do alpha r, which is d alpha dr. So we get derivative of r over s is 1 over s. Derivative of r squared is 2r plus 0, and derivative of 2r is 2. I could take an alpha uh, d alpha ds derivative. Now if I compose these two together, w of alpha of r comma s, and I'm going to call this f of x, y, z, so I have a better function notation. So instead of f inputting x, y, z, I'm going to let f input alpha, my alpha curve. Now this makes sense because alpha outputs three dimensions, f inputs three dimensions. So the number of dimensions are matching. What derivatives does it make sense to take of this function composition here? either r derivative or s derivative. So there's two partials that make sense to take. We're just going to take the r derivative, so I'm not going to worry about the s, just the r derivative here. So this function so it could have d d s or d d r taken. We are just going to do the DDR. So if I write the chain rule out, this is going to be gradient of F of alpha of RS dot. Now I can't write alpha prime because there's two derivatives, so I have to write alpha r of rs. So it's a derivative of f composed with alpha dot product with the derivative of alpha. So let's do the first part here, the gradient of f <clears throat> So 
So it's actually pretty easy to write this out. One is still one, two is still two. Now with two Z right here, I'm not feeding it X, Y, and Z. I'm feeding it alpha at the top. So here's my Z coordinate. If I input it in here, what I get is two times two R. So I'm replacing Z with two R. So this was my original Z right here. And I'm making that uh, function composition. So I'm replacing Z with 2R. And then we're going to take a dot product. We already computed the uh, alpha R is 1 over S comma 2R comma 2. So we're going to take this dot product. 1 times 1 over S is 1 over S plus 2 times 2R is 4R plus 8R. So that's 1 over S plus 12R. So any questions on the R derivative that we just got? So is there going to want that on a cheat sheet, or did you just box it? Kind of I just box because it's our answer. Where it came from for your cheat sheet is somewhere up here, hopefully. Oh, maybe I didn't box it. This is the formula I just used, and that would be f of alpha, and that was d dt f of alpha. So that's where it came from right there. And that was true in all cases? Yeah, the only, this is true in all cases. The only difference is I took specifically an r derivative right there. Right. Uh, well, I shouldn't circle that t. There was two inputs to alpha, so I just did a partial uh, by picking one of the two inputs. So we're going to recompute what we just did, but we're going to compute it in a different way. What we're going to do is simplify. Remember I've told you many times in calculus you can do algebra before or after calculus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simplify the inside before I take an R derivative. So let's compute what is f of alpha. So I'm going to write down f of alpha up top where we have f and alpha written down nicely. So if I compose f and alpha together, so I'm going to replace x with r over s. So that's the first step. Now y, there's 2y. I'm going to replace y with r squared plus ln s. Now z squared is, z is now going to be 2r, so we get 2r squared. And I'll simplify this down a little bit. R over S plus, we have 2R squared plus 4R squared is 6R squared plus 2LN S. So any questions about this right here? This is F of alpha. So it's kind of tricky to plug in multiple variable functions into other multiple variable functions. It's a little bit more tricky than a regular function composition. 
<clears throat> so I just simplified f of alpha. So now what we're going to do is take an r derivative of this function I just wrote down. So that's f of alpha. So we have r over s plus 6r squared plus 2ln s. All right, so take an r derivative. You already know the answer, but compute the r derivative just from what's on the screen here. And why is our last term, the derivative, going to be 0 for that? constant, there's no r in there, so the derivative of that will be 0. The r derivative of the last term will be 0. Oh, what a coincidence. The chain rule works. So you can compute the chain rule either way. You can actually fully compose the functions and then just compute the partial R derivative, or you can compute it with that dot product chain rule formula I gave you. It's up to you. So next topic, if your function of two variables, if it always equals zero, so if you have a function that's always zero and has continuous partial derivatives, and defines y as a function of x. So that was quite a thorough hypothesis. So if we start with, with a function who inputs two variables, always outputs zero. If it has continuous partial derivatives and defines y as a function of x, so if you have all those properties, then dy over dx is equal to negative fx over fy. Now, how do we get this? <clears throat> We'll get a proof. We can't write anything. All right, so we'll look at a proof. Let w equal f of x, y. All right, if w is always 0, what's the x derivative of this function? What's the x derivative of a constant function? Zero. We also know the x derivative can be written as fx dx dx plus fy dy dx. So this is the just using the chain rule right here. If you take an x derivative of w, there's two parts to it. There's a, uh, and you could have written this as gradient of f dot No, that won't work because we're not doing really function composition here. But that's just right from the chain rule. And of course, dx dx is 1. All right, solve. 
So solve right now for dy dx. It's right here. You're actually looking at a linear equation. You should just subtract and divide, and you're pretty much done. Or subtract and multiply. So we solve by subtracting fx the other side, then dividing by fy. So dy dx equals negative fx over fy. So that's where that comes from. Intuitively, you might think it should be fy over fx, but this is what you actually get in this case. So I just gave you a theorem that works in two dimensions, but now we have a problem in three dimensions. So there's an extra z. So let's think about what we're looking at. We have a function of three variables, so let's call it big F of x, y, z, but we're given that it always equals zero. Now when you look at this, there are plenty of x, y, z combinations that don't give me zero. An easy one to see, let's let y equal 0, z equals 0, and x is not 0. So there are plenty of points that are not in the domain of this function, because they would not give you 0. So for example, 1, 0, 0, x is 1, y and z are 0, would give me 1. So 1, 0, 0 is not in the domain of this function. What would I get if I you put it plugged in zero zero zero? I would get out zero. So the point zero 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 is in the domain of this function. So it makes sense to evaluate derivatives at that uh, point right there. So let's think about d z d x. So I want to find dz dx. We have that f is always 0. What derivative should I take to figure out dz dx? <coughs> Why does it make sense to take the x derivative to find this? It says take the x derivative. So I'm just taking what the, basically the derivative tells me to take. So I'm going to take the x derivative. So start with this. Take the x derivative. All right, so the function is always 0. So the derivative of this function will be 0. But we also have the chain rule. So what I get is... So I'm going to get fx ddx plus fy dy dx plus fz dz dx. So dx dx is 1, so that's just fx
Now, if I'm taking a partial x derivative, and I'm also looking at the z and the x-coordinate, I'm assuming that y is constant. So that dy dx will be 0. So that will disappear. And now I can solve for dz dx pretty easily. So I get negative fx over fc. All right, so step one, find the x and the y and the z derivative of your function. And then step two, find dz dx. And step three, find the other derivative I asked for, which is dz dy. You don't have to redo all the steps. Just think about how does the dz dy derivative relate to the dz dx derivative I've written down. It's basically the negative reciprocal of your derivatives. So what would dz dy equal? negative fy over fz, just following that same pattern. All right, so compute both of those right now. I'll scroll back out. This derivative, the x, y, and z derivatives are going to be ugly. You're going to have serious product rule and a tiny bit of chain rule in the exponential term. So any questions on these partial derivatives here? Especially the exponential derivatives I find can be, those chain rules can be kind of tricky. So that first chain rule. For that should be a yz e to the xy. So there shouldn't be any force here at all. Oh no. So it should be yx. So if I take the z derivative, I will get an extra x coefficient out. Okay. So I think that one's right. All right, so any other questions about that? Now just putting them together, f negative fx over fz. So 
I'm gonna stop the recording here so my computer's making some weird stuff. I don't want it to screw up the recording.